Our next panelist is Chaz Ebert. She's the president of Ebert Productions, LLC, the executive producer of the new public television show, Ebert Presents at the Movies, hosted by her husband, the veteran, widely acclaimed film critic, Roger Ebert. And previously, as a civil rights attorney, Chaz Ebert was named Lawyer of the Year for the Constitutional Rights Foundation and was selected as one of the outstanding young women in America. I mean, you are, hey, at the top of the heap, and all of a sudden, this great husband of yours, what was your <laughs> initial thought when you discovered you were now going to be a caregiver? Um, first of all, I want to thank you and Trish and everyone for inviting us, and I want to thank you for coming to listen to us this morning so that when you're developing guidelines for patient care, you take into account some of the other human parts of uh, what goes into treatment and, uh, and healing and sometimes not healing, sometimes. Uh, anyway, I just want to thank you. This means a lot to me to be here. Well, thank you for being here. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I, I thought because my husband is as optimistic and positive as he is, and he always thinks that you can find a solution to anything. Initially, we didn't think that there would be anything really so bad about his going into ho the hospital. He actually had had a, um, an occurrence of cancer years before we ever met. And, um, well, uh, actually a year or two before we met. And when we were talking about getting married, he told me that he had had uh, an occurrence of salivary cancer, but that it was very slow growing. They removed it, and he didn't think the way he thinks. He didn't think he would ever have another occurrence of it. That's just, you know, I guess we were in a fool's paradise. And in I any way did that uh, admission by him, uh, that reportage, affect uh, your feeling about whether you should get married? What it did do, I, w I was glad that he came clean and told me about it so that I could make a decision if something, if there was an occurrence, would it, is it something that I could, thought that I, I could handle? And I decided, yes, I could. Of course, he thought it would never reoccur. And uh, we, we, were, we got married in 1992. And I think um, his first uh, recurrence of, well, actually, it wasn't the salivary cancer, it was the thyroid cancer was in about maybe 2002. So we had been together for a number of years. And that's and what he's suffering from now. Thyroid. That was separate, yes. And so that's why we thought, oh, this is nothing. And, and the doctor told us, if you have to have a cancer, thyroid cancer is the one to have because they can take it out and then they give you uh, a, a dose of some radioactive something that causes all of the cancer cells anywhere in your body, thyroid cancer cells, to sort of commit suicide, and you're free of it. So we were very, again, optimistic. Were that that were true, right, Bill? <laughs> cancer? Well, for thyroid Someday cancer. Someday they'll find a way to make it. We'll for for thyroid Schultz. cancer. Anyway, yeah. I, I just want to get through this rather quickly so that others can speak, because I want to hear what they have to say. Take another four or five seconds. No, go ahead, <laughs> Chaz. <laughs> well, in 2003, I think he had a, another recurrence of the salivary cancer, and he had radiation and a, a very strong form, I think it's neutron beam radiation, which, what, which destroys cancer cells, but as any radiation does, destroys very healthy cells as well. So that in 2006, the, which was really the crucial year when he had a recurrence, we, we, we didn't think anything of it again. However, this time, I knew something was different about it. I just, just knew in my spirit that this was very different. And when he went into surgery, he had, this time they had to remove his right jaw, his mandible, and uh, they had to reform it. So they took a bone out of his leg, they took tissue uh, off of his shoulder, and they did a reconstruction, 
And we thought everything was okay. What we didn't know is that underneath all of the reconstruction, the cells where everything was just falling away because there was no blood flow because of the previous radiation. And so on the day he was going home, two weeks after that surgery, he was in the hospital and he, was, he loved playing music for the doctors and the nurses and he was playing Leonard Cohen's I Am Your Man and his carotid artery ruptured. This, this, this is a horrible story, creel story, true story. We're gonna come back to you once you became the caregiver. I know there are lots of things you're going to tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Our next panelist is Priscilla Mack, a great friend of Jan's and mine for years and years, along with her wonderful husband, the former uh, Senator Connie Mack from Florida, who, uh, who's one of those rare birds. He walked away from the Senate to do other things with his life when he easily could have been reelected by acclamation. You don't see that very often in Washington. Priscilla, I think of you and I think of Job. You've had breast cancer. Connie has had melanoma. His brother died of melanoma. Your daughter has had cancer. I mean, I, I don't want to leave out anyone, but this is too much. So I don't know where to begin with you, but let's begin with Connie, since you were a caregiver for him, as well as your daughter, uh, when he was stricken with melanoma. Tell me about that. Tell us about that. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to go back just a little bit. Um, the reality of cancer hit uh, Connie and I and our family very hard when his brother was diagnosed with melanoma. Uh, he 1979, he died, right? He died in 79. Yeah. He was 35 years old. Multiple surgeries, multiple uh, chemotherapies. Anyway, it was, I became a caregiver to Connie at that time. He was grieving for his brother. And they were like tw twins. And uh, I di didn't had any idea what this was all about, but I knew um, I, I just needed to be there for him and I didn't know what to do. And caregivers, um, we will do anything, but we have no idea what the needs of the patient or the rest of the family is. You, you, uh, you don't. Anyway, uh, through that, uh, we became very involved in the uh, melanoma cancer thing. And then um, Connie was uh, diagnosed. Interesting, Sam, it was um, right after he was elected to the Senate in 1989. He, uh, he was um, roaming around Florida doing his work, and he had had a, an examination before we came back home to Florida, and the doctor from the um, Senate called him and said, um, uh, Senator Mack, uh, we'd like for you to come back to Washington. Uh, your biopsy w was uh, cancerous, and we we need to, um, you know, we need to talk about it. So if you'll if you'll cut your trip short and come back, we'll do it. Well, I can tell you from my perspective, um, Connie is the light of my life, and I thought, oh my God, I can't lose him like we lost Michael. I mean, I just had this flashback. And I want to express that it's not fear, it's not scary, it's not anything, it's terror. It is absolute terror to hear your loved one has cancer. I don't know any more gentle way to put it. And that's what we felt. I felt that we were going to lose him like we did Michael. That was the only thing I had to re rely on. And it was the terror of facing that, that um, I, I just can remember to this day, I, you can tell I just go into a terror mode. However, once you face it and you get the information you need uh, to deal with it, to work with it, the reality of it and all, it does become hopeful. And fortunately for us, Connie's um, melanoma had not spread. He had surgery and there was no more um, uh, treatment necessary. Okay, after the terror, we're going to come back to you and you talk about the things that once you gathered yourself together, you and Connie, you did. Uh, and I just must say that when I was diagnosed with melanoma, it got in the newspapers in Washington. And, and the call the next morning, my assistant said, Senator Mack is on the line for you. 
Well, I knew him. I'd met him, but I'd never covered him in Florida. We were not social friends. I said, I said Sam, he said, yes, Senator. He said, I had melanoma six years ago. It's all gone now. You're going to be fine. I have followed Connie Mack to the gates of hell. He's never asked me to go through. I might go through for him. But I just say to people, when you have a friend or, or even someone you don't know who's diagnosed with what you have or had, but you're okay, call them up. Say, here I am. <laughs> it lifts their spirits. And now Connie has gotten started at the great Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, a melanoma center. What, three years maybe? It'll be up in three or four years mm -hmm. yes. uh, to help treat this disease. Jay Pausch, you are the maker of this particular panel, and I thank you for it. It's so nice to see you again. Loving mother, devoted wife, and she became an impassioned advocate for pancreatic cancer, particularly following the death of her husband, Randy Pausch. I'm sure you may have heard of Randy. PhD, acclaimed Carnegie Mellon University professor, and the author of that internationally best-selling book, The Last Lecture. And Randy passed away in 2008, and Jay, when you, when you discovered what, what, well, what time of day was it or whatever, what day that you were going to be a caregiver because your husband had cancer, tell us about that. Um, well, it, it started um, with uh, Randy just feeling fatigued, um, not being able to get out of bed. Um, he went through a series of tests. Was it strep? No. Was it a virus? No. Um, was it hepatitis A, B, C? And the test went on and on and we waited. We were waiting to see a specialist. And during this time period, I should tell you um, that I had a three and a half month old baby. Um, my middle son was about to turn two and I had a four and a half year old. Um, so I was ready for Rainy to get out of bed <laughs> and please help me <laughs> with these three little kids that we had chosen to have in this wonderful family that we were creating. Um, so there was a lot of uh, stress on my part just to keep the household running while Randy was trying to uh, rest and recover. Um, he had painless jaundice, um, which uh, I didn't know what that meant. Um, and I should have noticed the look on the doctor's faces when they turned their faces away from me. Um, I should have realized that something was really wrong. But I had no experience with cancer. Nobody in our family had ever had cancer. Um, we were pretty young. Um, I was um, 39 at the time my husband was diagnosed. So I didn't really have any friends who had had cancer. So kind of like Mrs. Mack, I was um, clueless. And um, when we heard that it was pancreatic cancer, I didn't know what that was. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what the pancreas did. Uh, and I didn't know how bad it was. Um, by the time I'd hung up the phone with the doctor, um, my husband folded up his laptop and he said, I'm, I'm going to die from this. Uh, this is a cancer you don't beat because the five-year survival rate is only 5% uh, for pancreatic cancer. Um, that didn't mean that he gave up hope. Um, yeah, but it just what meant he said that he was reality. You, what, what did you think? Oh, did I you cried. Give up hope? <laughs> I cried. I collapsed because here I had been struggling for just four weeks to kind of keep our house together, to keep our children's lives normal. And I thought, oh my God, if you die and I have to keep doing this, I can't do it. How am I going to do this all on my own? It wasn't supposed to be like that. You know, we had three children because we were going to do this together. And not because he wanted this to happen, but because that was the situation. In that moment, I thought, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Um, but you made it, and we're going to hear more about that story. There is a terrible saying, and maybe you've heard it. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him you've made a plan. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> terrible saying, but you just reminded me of that.